Hello, fellow gunners, Tim at the loading bench. Now well, we're going to get back into the uh, shotgun only powder and pistol cartridge <laughs> series. Oh man, all right. Need to adjust my uh, seating die for my 357. We're going to get uh, back into some clay dot in the 357. Oh, there we go. Ooh. I didn't want that thing to move, did I? All right. <clears throat> going to be loading this. Uh, 121 grain Lyman current cone with uh, some clay dot. We're going to go from uh, 3.5 to uh, 5.3 and 0.3 grain intervals. Now if I get any speeds like a Hodgins clay. We're going to be running anywhere from 900 up to 1200 feet per second. With the, uh, that was with what they called a 125 grain round flat nose. We're going to be using this. These are casting out at uh, 126 grain. But now here's here's the deal. These bullets, the cone is really long past the, uh, I guess you call it old jive. I, 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 the, does cone bullets have an old jive? Anyway, as you can see, I'm way above anything to really crimp on if I go up this high. We're going to try, now, the reason why it's down in there so far is because my cylinder on my uh, little Rossi is uh, a pretty short cylinder. <laughs> it's not like my Ruger Security 6. That thing had a pretty, pretty good long cylinder on it. We're going to see... How far down we can get this bullet, or how high we can get this bullet, and still get it to go in the cylinder. There's no shells in the gun up until I try one out to see if it's going to fit in my cylinder. All right, I've already threw. 3.5 charges. I've brung this down to match this. Maybe I shouldn't. Go bring that back up a little bit. Because we're going to if you get too short, you really can't bring it back out. If you get long, you can push it back in. Gotcha. Alright. Here we go. Let's try this. See what happens. If you can see that or not, I think you can. There's just there's still a little bit of meat there on that bullet. Bring it down just a little bit more. Now my 357 RCBS uh, sitting die has a tapered crimp, so I'm not going to have the rollover crimp. So that actually may be good. down a little bit more but there's still a little bit of meat there bring it down just a little bit more oh there it is now we're into the crimp all right that 
see how that fits in the cylinder. There it is, guys. Uh, can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. See, it's still past my cylinder. Actually, you can see that better on camera than you can with the naked eye. So, I'm going to have to adjust that down even a little bit more. Well, hopefully, since I got a little bit of a crimp in there. I can do that. All right, so I've kind of pulled up some of the powder coat because it was already crimped. All right. Let's see how that works. I think that might do it, guys. Yeah, it's... I really hate to close my cylinder. I'm going to have to see if that's going to fit. Yep, okay, it worked. All right, so we found our, our size with that bullet. I need to write that down. length is uh, 1.609 the overall case length cartridge length overall length let's just go with that all right now we got that settled all right this is where I go you know what I'm doing? I'm going from uh, 3 .5, 3 .8, 4 .1, 4 .4, 4 .7, 5, and then 5.3. Now I'm using the Hodgins play and I really got a feeling this builds up pressure before the clay does so in the manual it's got 3.5 at going 984 feet per second and the 5.3 at going 1260 feet per second all right guys that's what I'm loading so uh seen me load one the rest of them's all going to be the same and then uh i'll meet you down at the range hey guys we're at the range we got my uh i don't know if this is working or not but i got my rossi 971 we're going to try out these loads We'll be back here about 12 yards. Here we go. All right, guys, that was uh, three point. Uh, five grains of clay dot. Now we're going to come back with five, 
3.8. All right, here we go, guys, with 3.8 grains of clay dot in the 357 with the uh, 126 grain Lyman turret cone. All right, guys, here we go with uh, 4.1 grains of clay dot. All right, well, it's getting a little stiffer. All right, here we go, guys, with 4.4 uh, grains, clay dot. Ooh, my groups are getting bigger. Yeah, maybe it's just a flyer. All right, guys, here we go with 4.7 grains. All right, now we can tell they're really magnums. That group actually tightened up. All right, here we go, guys. Five grains of clay dot. Well, that one opened up. They're ejecting okay and sliding back and forth in the cylinder okay. If you can see that. And the primers look really good. So we're going to uh, keep going to uh, 5.3. Keep bumping the car. There we go. All right, guys, 5.3 grains of clay dot. Cylinder opened up good. Primers look good. Sliding back and forth. No pressure signs. Well, that was my magnum charge for that powder. Looking good, guys. Actually, that last group wasn't, wasn't half bad. All right. I'll catch you back at the bench. Guys, back from the range at the bench. Uh, I'll show the target here. Here's our 3.5 grains. It was a uh, 3.286 group. And then the 3.8.
was a uh, 3.492 group. All this was shot offhand <clears throat> at 1,200 yards. 12 yards. Not 12 and a half, 12 yards. All right. And then the 4.1, you'll see, you have already seen in the video, it clipped the paper. First shot. And the other four shots went here. Which was over six inches, so... <laughs> <laughs> and then we went to uh, 4.4, which spread out to, and then the 4.7 actually tightened up. Now, I don't know what that means when it moves lateral like that, horizontal. Anybody know what that means? Is that me? I'd say because most of this is me. Then it opened up again over here at five grains. Then when we got down to uh, 5.3 grains, it's just a little over three inches. Barely over three inches. I don't know if I was just getting used to shooting my pistol or it actually was that more accurate. Now those, those those shot really nice. Now guys, I want to explain why I'm going with the poster board and the dots. On regular targets, I've noticed they're just so busy with all those squares and an inch and then your circle and then your outer circle and then your inner circle. And they're just too busy. You really can't see where you're hitting and then when you're sitting there explaining about it, you lose track of where you're talking about. This, this is just so much cleaning, cleaner. You know, you, your dots are right here. You can see them. You're full of holes. They're just so much clearer to see. I, uh, well, and I'll tell you... <laughs> Post board like this, about 33 cents a piece. And then your dots, boy, you get a lot of dots for a buck and a half, two bucks. So, like I said, it just, you, you see everything so much clearer. All right, now let's go over the brass. Now, there's one thing I've noticed, you know, when using clay dot before, what we shoot in the uh, 45 and the 38 special. It was, it was really dirty, really, really dirty. You know, I always used red dot and it's dirty, but this has been dirtier. Okay, now this is my lightest load with the 3.5 grains. Not that it's not that dirty. Then when you went up to the uh, the maximum charge, it's actually really, really clean. So now we're using Starline Brass and uh, S and B primers until I run out of S and B primers. And then we won't be using S and B primers anymore. Then buying them at the convenience store. <laughs> You know, uh, that was in my one of my earliest videos about buying stuff around local. Got a convenience store that sells shotgun powder and different stuff. And uh, and a blacksmith, um, um, uh, farrier, farrier down the road. He sells reloading stuff. I have yet to visit him. I need to get down there and visit him. He's got a website. My wife's told me about it, and I keep skipping my mind. But in this 357, that dirty, dirty powder has actually been burning really clean. So I don't know what that's all about. Now this, this brass, I've had it since 90. 
and I bought it before deer season. That's when I had my uh, Marlin 1894, 357. Uh, so I've had it since 90. About 27 years. I'll be 27 years this coming November. I've had this brass. I like Starline Brass. I've, I've always been sold on it. But, okay, guys, that's that's my finding. Uh, no primer issues at all. So you can see. No flattening. And that was with my Hodgins manual for clay. Um... Uh, Soon as I get a chronograph, <laughs> we'll go. We'll revisit a lot of these, the ones that we like, and revisit and see what the speeds are. Supposedly that's going over twelve and almost thirteen, but at the heading of that those loads, it said pistol and carbine. So I don't know if they it didn't say what they were testing it in. I don't know if it was a six inch car uh pistol or an eighteen inch carbine or a twenty inch carbine. So I don't know. The gun don't look all that dirty. Which normally I use um unique or red dot. It's normally really, really dirty. So, it's not, I don't have a flashlight anymore, my, all my batteries are dead. But I can tell you right now, that, that board is just clean. And that was with that light velvet, there I go saying velvet again, light violet powder coat. I've also noticed, my targets... In the most part, I'm aiming at the dot, and I'm putting my uh, sight at the bottom of the dot, with the dot on top of the sight. So I'm shooting low. So I definitely need to raise it. Yeah. So there's that. So, that's the conclusion on that, guys. Next, we'll be using the um, 2028 powder and see how it does. Thanks, guys, for watching. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. I'll catch you in the next video.